This video is about how to help you choose a topic for your physics internal assessment. This is based on my many years as a teacher and examiner. It's the same for HL and SL. So a lot of different courses have different nuances when they have their internal assessment. And so these are specific to physics. So one of the things I want to say is when you choose a topic, make sure you stay within the IV syllabus. It's better to choose a simpler topic and explain it well than try and do something that's more complex and you have difficulties being able to explain it completely. The other thing I would say is there's three topics here that I would suggest you do not choose. The relationship between a frequency, tension in a string, the relationship between the concentration and the index of refraction, and air resistance acting on a parachute. These are ones that have been done over and over again, like dropping a ball into a crater of sand and seeing how it gets affected. So much so that the examiners have seen them so often and they already have ideas of exactly what the pitfalls are and where things should be improved. And if you haven't met those expectations, then what's going to happen is your grade will drop. Okay, so if you think about it in terms of normally we suggest you have, you know, two or three ways to improve. Well, the examiners already have two or three set things they're looking for. So if you're beyond that, then you might end up saying, ah, oh, you've missed some major ones. Whereas if you have something that's a little bit more unique, then your two or three are probably going to be that much more important. So if I'm saying to stay within the syllabus, it's so much information. Where should we start? How do we get an idea? Well, to be honest, some of the best places I think are your everyday life. Look at a toy store, a hardware store, spend some time going through them and say, well, I wonder how this works. Is this actually related to anything I've done in the last year in IB? Right? You're probably doing this between IB1 and IB2, so you've done a whole year worth of information of just like, how can I apply it? That's really what we want you to do. Other places to go and look would be things like popular science or nature magazines. Remember, we're looking for a springboard of, hey, that would be a cool thing to explore further. We want you to do good science well. We're not looking for Nobel Prize within physics. We are asking you to take all of the work that you've been doing and saying, I can see how to use it. Another way to be doing this would be to look at some of the experiments or demonstrations you've done in class and say, well, this is a way I've done it. Well, what if I did it a different way? Or in class, this was my independent variable and this is my dependent variable. What if I had a different independent variable? Or how about I measured it from a different way? These would be all giving you ways to make your own experiment. Okay, we don't want you to just pull one out of a textbook and say, hey, here's an experiment I haven't done before. There needs to be some kind of part of you in that. And finally, one of the most important things is don't just Google. Okay, we don't want to deal with plagiarism. We don't want to deal with something that everybody um, has seen before. We have to have a bit of you. This needs to be your internal assessment. Okay, so if I'm going to give you an example of how to make a internal assessment and come up with an idea, um, I can't just walk around the toy store or hardware store or things like that. So I've got another way to do this. I have a website here from Harvard University. And remember, we're still staying within our syllabus. So no, I'm not asking you to go do some university level physics. Uh, but I want to show you how you can take some ideas and expand them when you're looking for some inspiration. Okay, so I have the um, link there that you can check this out. And let me just show you quickly how you can actually go through and start thinking about how do I make an IA from a simple demonstration. So here's the website once I've clicked on that link. We're going to go to Light and Optics. And let's, let's try polarization. And in polarization, let's go to double refraction. Okay, so here it's showing me a demonstration using a piece of calcium calcite. If we look at this, we see that there are two images of the dots and crosses through the piece of calcium calcite. 
Now, if I move on down, it actually is going to show me how it works. And in this case, light coming through has two rays coming out. And notice that they're both polarized. And the one that goes straight on through, they're calling the ordinary ray, is polarized in one direction. And the extraordinary ray has been refracted, even though the angle of incidence is zero. And notice it's polarized the other way. Now, it actually is going to tell me all about it here and how I would set it up and some interesting things about this demonstration. Now, this is just a demonstration. So how can I turn that into an internal assessment? Well, in the reading, it also tells me that the ordinary ray satisfies Snell's law, but the extraordinary ray doesn't. So maybe I'm going to set something up where I'm going to then test to see if that is true. So, as you know from your classes already, I could then have varying angles of incidence, measure my angle of refraction, and I would have to do that appropriately because I need the angle of refraction in the crystal. And then maybe I could go through and I could see whether or not that's true. Another thing I could do is use it to see, well, we also know from dispersion that when we put white light through a prism that it gets broken up into the different colors in the spectrum, right? The nice pretty rainbow. Perhaps I could take this and I could use different wavelengths of light and I could see whether or not that angle of deviation between the ordinary ray and the extraordinary ray is consistent with the wavelength. So that's how I could take some small little piece of material here and that I could start to change some things. Remember, we want to think about, well, what one thing would I change and what one thing would I measure? So here's a unique idea of how I could use something as simple as index of refraction to actually come up with my own internal assessment. So what about personal engagement? Now here's where I need to be really clear. This is no longer part of the Physics IA. If you have an example in front of you, or you have somebody's video and they're talking about personal engagement in your internal assessment, it is about the previous syllabus. It's out of date. It really did seem like a misnomer. It wasn't about, hey, I've always loved doing this. It was supposed to be about how you made the experiment yours. Now, we do want you to have something in your background to explain why is this relevant. We don't want your background to be a history lesson the topic, but we do want to see its relevance. Now, this is a quote from November 2019. The most successful investigations had well-defined research questions. This really is the important part of your internal assessment before you begin. We want clearly identified variables, one independent and one dependent. We want this internal assessment to be focused, so that means one independent and one dependent variable. More is not better. It just means that you haven't decided. So for the example I gave, my research question could be, how does the wavelength of light affect the angle of deviation between the ordinary and extraordinary rays created from calcium calcite? So we are really looking for creativity, innovation, some independent thinking. Not Nobel winning physics, but something a little bit that says it's you. That video that says, hey, I got a seven, well, they were the first of many, and now it doesn't seem so unique. So I hope this has helped you with some ideas, how to come up with new ideas, how to take and create an investigation. Remember, start with looking at some, an idea that, hmm, I wonder how that works. Even best if you can relate it to something in real day life, okay? Choose a single independent variable. What one single thing are you going to change? And make sure it's quantitative. It needs to be measured. Likewise, one single dependent variable. What are you going to measure to see the effect of the independent variable? It needs to be quantitative. I need to be able to measure with numbers. And then all of those things are going to have to be held the same 
so that we don't have anything else affecting your results. If you start with a really good research question based on something you can talk about, something you can explain, then you're going to get the best kind of result from your IA.